Hey everybody, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and today we're going to find out how bad the Bandai Namco Flashback is. So a lot of you may have already heard about this product and the story surrounding it. But for those who haven't, what happened is about one month ago, AT Games sent John Hancock a Bandai Namco Flashback to review and the product he was sent featured arcade games that sounded and played great. But soon after that, the public found out that the Bandai Namco flashback that was being sold at the stores such as Walmart did not include arcade ROMs. Instead, it came with NES versions of all the games. And John did do a follow-up video warning people not to buy because the product he advertised was not the product being sold, and he was clearly upset, and rightfully so. And to make matters worse, even the artwork on the box is deceiving. Every single screenshot and thumbnail shows the arcade versions of all the games. So today what I'm going to show you is a comparison of the NES games versus the arcade games and try to be unbiased about this product and talk about the good, if there is any, in the bad. So here's a look at the Blast itself and on one end of this it has an HDMI plug-in so this plugs in directly to your TV. And to power this you will need a micro USB cable which is included but this cable is extremely short. So unless your TV has a 5 volt 1 amp USB output, this will not work. You're going to have to get a longer cable because this thing is just so short. It also comes with some stickers, yay, and an instruction manual that's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's not much to hook this up, you just got to plug it in, hook up that power, and then you have to pair that controller, but you don't have to do that the first time you use it. As far as how the controller feels, it feels okay. All the buttons are plastic. I have felt controllers that feel a lot cheaper than this, but this one definitely does not feel great. And featured on this controller is a menu button plus a rewind button. This controller most represents the original Sega Genesis controller, but instead of having three buttons, it has six buttons. And that's another thing, I'm not sure why it has six buttons because none of the games use six buttons. And here's what the main menu looks like, and we have eight different games. We got Pac-Man, Pac-Mania, Dig Dug, Galaga, Galaxian, Mappy, Skykid, and Xevious. So let's start off with Pac-Man, and again this is the NES version, along with the rest of the games that's included on this version that I purchased at Walmart. So as far as the gameplay, it seems to be pretty good. I don't notice any issues graphically, I don't see any screen tearing going on. It seems to play okay, it's just not the arcade version. And here is the arcade version, and pretty much everything about this version is superior. The sound is amazing in comparison to the NES version. And now we're back to the flashback version and we're going to test out the rewind feature. So now I'm going to push that rewind button and that's going to take me 7 seconds back in time and now I'm back alive. So it seems to work but the UI is a little strange and funky but it works. You also have the option to save a game. If you push that menu button, that brings up a couple different options. You have the option to quit the game, save the game, or load a game. Okay, it's time to test out the next game, which is Pac-Mania, which is a Walmart exclusive. That's great news, right? Pac-Mania, you can't get it anywhere else but Walmart, but this version is not good. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with the screen, but there seems to be a lot of distortion and a little bit of screen tearing, and the controls are not any better. And this is the arcade version of Pac-Mania. Now this was not included in John Hancock's review because this is the Walmart exclusive. But this is the game that's represented on the back of the box for the artwork. That game that's on the artwork is the arcade version. So it should be very clear and easy to see the differences between the arcade version and the NES version. And here's the flashback version of Dig Dug. And to be fair, this game seems to play okay. I don't really notice any problems as far as gameplay goes. Obviously the sound is not near as good as the arcade, and we'll see that here in just a few, but, but overall I'd say the game plays like it should. And here's the arcade version, and as you can hear, the sound is far superior. And if you pay attention close, there's also quite a bit more color. And now we're back to the flashback, and this is Galaga. Now this seems to play okay, the gameplay seems to be fine, and graphically this looks alright, but as far as controls and sound go, the arcade rules in comparison. 
and this is the arcade version and like I said the controls and sound is better on this one but I don't think that's a problem with the emulation I just think that is the limitations of the NES version itself. And now we're back to the flashback and this is Galaxian. As far as gameplay goes, it seems to play well. I don't notice any issues with the emulation, but obviously it's not as good as the arcade. And here is the arcade version and graphically it might look like a downgrade at first, but trust me, this version is better. And this is Flashback's version of Mappy. And this game seems to play okay, I'm not really noticing any issues. And here's the arcade version of Mappy, and obviously we're starting to see a trend here because it's better. And here's the flashback version of Sky Kid, and I played this for a while and I didn't notice any issues. It seems to play like it should. Now keep in mind, when I say it plays like it should, that means it plays like it should on the original Nintendo, not like it was originally advertised, which would have been the arcade version. And here's the arcade version, and it's pretty obvious which one's better. And here's the last game on the flashback, this is Xebius, and I do not care for this version at all. Now I do not remember how it played on the original Nintendo, but as far as this version goes, there seems to be a lot of screen distortion, and the controls do not seem to be good either. And this is the arcade version, and there is a huge difference in the sound, control, and graphics. So here's what it comes down to. The Bandai Namco Flashback Blast is about 19 bucks at Walmart, you get 8 different games, but I'd say out of 8 of those games, only 6 of these games are worth playing. I would say Xevious and Pac-Mania are no good and they should not even be included. So bottom line, you're paying 19 bucks for just 6 Nintendo games on a stick. The NES Mini is only 60 bucks and you get 30 games. Plus you can hack it and add thousands of games. So in my opinion, for 19 bucks, it's definitely not worth that. Maybe if it was 10 bucks and if you like those 6 games that do work decent, 10 bucks might be an okay deal. And with all the bad publicity that's surrounding this right now, we might actually see a price tag of $10 or less because it's getting such a bad rep. The way I see it is this company is going to have to start stepping up their game and improving their quality, or this company will eventually just disappear. Okay, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please click that like button, and have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.